In this video, we'll remove the lids from the plastic tanks, so we'll be able to install a heat transfer tube. The increased surface area will increase the heat transfer rate and allow us to use fewer tanks for the domestic hot water system. This will also facilitate the process of connecting the tanks through the sides with the heat stratification pipe. We'll drill a little starter hole here. Fairly thick material. It's uh, at least a quarter of an inch thick on the top. Uh, very tough uh, tank, actually. And one thing that's really nice about it is you don't have to worry about it rusting. It'll never rust on you. Okay, so the next uh, step is going to involve cutting it off. Now you might have a better idea, a better way of doing this, but this is the best I could come up with. Okay, we've cut the lid off these tanks, and in a little while we'll be joining the tanks together. Uh, but before we do that, I'm going to make a, a lid, because once this is filled with hot water, uh, it becomes uh, volatile. We don't want to uh, fill the basement with steam. Even though it's not at the boiling point, it's still going to evaporate pretty quickly if we don't put a lid on it. Anyway, uh, so we're going to make a lid out of styrofoam. This is a one inch uh, closed cell uh, polystyrene foam. Uh, so I made a little compass. The diameter of our tank on the inner lip is 22 inches. So our compass is 11 inches. This is our, our compass, a stick with a nail in it. So we just center it and then draw a circle. This will be our guideline. This is fun. This is the fun part, see? Taking the lids off wasn't really as bad as I thought it was. It took me five minutes to take both lids off the tanks, but I didn't want to spend video time uh, taping the, the process of taking the lids off with a sawzall. Okay, so now we're going to cut this out. Uh, we can use a sawzall or we can just use a um, drywall knife. Let me just use a drywall knife. That's simple enough. All right, now you don't have to watch me do this either. <laughs> this is kind of boring, I know. Okay. Here we have our inner lid for our tank uh, cut from styrofoam. It's one inch styrofoam, so it fits right against this lip here. Looks a bit crude, but uh, it'll work fine. It's a waterproof lid, and it's also insulated. Uh, now, to finish this off, we might also want to put a uh, piece of plywood. We'll cut a nice little round piece of plywood and glue this right to it. So that'll give us a little extra support and a little more insulation to keep the heat in. The subtle bond for the top lid. But don't forget, we're still not done with this tank. We're going to be installing a, uh, a tube, either PEX or polyethylene, inside the tank. And then the, the last thing that you'll do, you're going to have to have uh, exit holes for your uh, polyethylene or PEX tubes. And I would recommend doing that through the side of the tank near the top. Now it all depends on where the tube's going to come out. So that's the last thing that you want to drill. Before we do that, though, we're going to have to connect these tanks. Remember, this is uh, designed for a multi-tank uh, heat storage system. So uh, whether you're using it for hot water or home heating, you're going to want more than one or two. Maybe you want six. Or, well, it's up to you. But anyway, we're going to have to find a way of connecting these tanks. And we can no longer connect them by uh, thermal siphoning because we've cut the lids off. So we're going to have to connect these tanks through the sides. And uh, we'll talk about that in just a moment. Um, what we want to do is connect these two tanks through the sides. Remember before we had lids on top, so 
when we wanted to improve stratification, what we did is we took the coldest water from this tank with a dip tube but we, uh, and siphoned the water out into the uh, top part of the next tank. But we won't be able to do that anymore because we've removed the lids, remember? Okay, so we have to connect these tanks through the sides. Now, uh, these tanks are different sizes and they're also different diameters. Uh, you're going to get uh, uh, variations in these tank sizes a little bit. But uh, as long as you keep the, the distance that we're going to be drilling the holes the same from the bottom, uh, you'll be okay. So I, I put a little board here just as a reference point, okay, and this is what I call a story stick. Uh, and I don't know, it's about uh, 13 inches long or so. You can vary it. I, what I'm going to do is just put the hole uh, approximately in the center of each tank. So we'll put a little mark here. Okay. This is our reference mark. Okay, we've marked our vertical distance from the bottom of the tank, but now we have to mark our horizontal distance, 180 degrees from this point. Uh, so the way I, I'm going to be doing that is I'm, I have this wire, and it's approximately uh, will fit on our tank like this. But, uh, so what I've done is I put a little mark at the end so that it's uh, the same distance either way. Anyway, uh, so what we'll be doing is um, we'll be getting marks on both sides of the tank 180 degrees apart. So now I just slide the wire over here, slide it down. The exact position of the, of the mark isn't really that important, but we want to get it approximately uh, 180 degrees from the point on this side. So we're going to be putting a mark on this side and then on the other side. These are our industrial tanks with the lids removed. And we're uh, connecting them in series. Now I only have two here, but you could have uh, 16 or, or 20 or however many you want to connect. Uh, now remember the important thing that we're concerned with especially if we're going to be using multiple tanks as stratification. So we want uh, the uh, preceding tank to be hotter than the, the next tank. Uh, and to do that, we can channel the water from the preceding tank. In this case, assume there's a tank over here that's uh, the hot water is coming from the collector. So this is where the hot water enters uh, uh, from this uh, spigot on this side of the tank. So if you look on the inside you can see there's like an elbow and the elbow is pointed up so that directs the hot water towards the top of the tank. Uh, and that's the natural place for hot water to be. Hot water is cold, uh, lighter than cold water so you'd expect it to hover on the top of the tank. Now we want to take the coldest water from this tank and put it into our next tank. So you can see there's an elbow, and the elbow is pointed down towards the bottom of the tank. So that will siphon the uh, cold water from the tank. If we wanted to, we could even put a, an extension on it to make it a little better. Okay, so uh, that's, this is one method of uh, stratifying heat in tanks. And we, that process would be repeated, and we'd connect it to the, this tank, and the next tank, and the next tank, and so on. But uh, what, what I want to do is, uh, I have a, uh, another system that I think is even better uh, for stratification. Uh, I've found that uh, if you can reduce uh, the turbulence in the water, that increases the, the stratification also. You want the natural convection currents to uh, separate the hot water from the cold water. 
and if we have too much turbulence, uh, that interferes with the process. So I've come up with a uh, what I call a heat stratification pipe. Okay, the next thing we need to make is something that I call a heat stratification pipe. Uh, this is a PVC pipe, uh, and this is going to connect one tank uh, to another tank. Two inches. I have a inch and a half circular saw, and we're going to drill holes in a two inch PVC pipe. So be sure to secure this to some kind of a jig before you do it. Now every time you drill this, you're going to have to take out this piece, otherwise, you won't be able to drill the next hole. So you don't have to watch me do it. Okay, this is basically what I was talking about, the heat stratification pipe. Now, um, what happens is the hot water from the first tank comes into this pipe, and see there'll be a block in the center. Uh, you just stuff this with uh, polyethylene, uh, a plastic bag or something, right in the center. So the water doesn't go straight through. The water comes through this uh, pipe, and then it, it'll go up towards the top of the tank. And the water that will be uh, siphoned off for the next tank will come from the bottom. See, there's five holes on the top and five holes on the bottom. Okay, there's one thing I neglected to talk about, and that's the process of drilling holes through the sides of the plastic tanks. Now that should seem simple enough, but I recommend that you practice on some plastic material that's not so important before you start drilling holes in the sides of the tank. You want to get that hole just about right. Uh, now, the size of the the actual size of the hole, uh, at least for the uh, two inch rubber boots that I'm using, is two and three quarter inch. Uh, now, when you get this circular saw, a two and three quarter inch, that's actually going to be a little bit uh, too big. And the, the first holes that I drilled, you can see that the, it's, it's a little loose right here. Um, so I used some silicon caulking to make up for it. Actually, I, I didn't get any leaks, but I'd like to do a better job and I'd like you to learn from this experience. Now, as you remember from before, the, this is the way you install a rubber boot in the hole. Fold it up like this, and then just open it up. It's going to have to fit pretty tight. Uh, actually, that's not not in. But anyway, uh, so it's going to have to fit pretty tight. And then you're going to take your two-inch PVC, you lubricate the PVC, and you push it through. And when you push it through, that that makes uh, a watertight seal. All right, you remember that. Okay, all right. Now, uh, the other, th what I wanted to mention was that, all right, this is inch and three quarter circular saw, okay? But it's a little too big. So we want to grind off the outer teeth of the circular saw. And you can do that if you have a grinding wheel or some kind of a, a stone that you can press it against. It's nice if the if the grinding wheel can be moving and the drill is moving also. Okay. Okay. So by doing that you grind off the, the outer teeth of the circular saw so that makes the hole just a little bit smaller and I found that works pretty good. Alright, uh, so get some scrap plastic material and practice drilling the hole. Now you should stabilize it a little better than I'm doing. Okay, so you'll drill holes just like this through the sides of your tank. Now you probably can't see with your eye but this hole here is a little is a little uh, smaller. The diameter of this hole is a little bit less than the diameter of this hole because I ground the, the outer teeth. 
So it's going to be a little harder to get this rubber boot on, but I have faith in you. I know you can do it. Just fold it up like that, and then you just pop it out. Okay, it's going to fit nice and tight the way we want it. That's a little, a little bit off. So you got to practice on this for me, right? You're not just going to start drilling holes through the sides of your beautiful plastic tanks without practicing. All right, so that's in there. Adjust it a little bit. Now, that boot is fitting so tight that you won't be able to get this uh, PVC pipe in the hole without putting lubricant on. But you put a little mineral oil on it or some soap solution, you should be able to slide it right in there. So, whether your plastic tanks have lids on them or not, the ability to install rubber boots is important. In the next video, Recycle for Solar Part 3, we'll see how the tanks with heat stratification pipes may be joined together.